That is that clock. That one's slow. Tested. That's correct. This um, my computer says six thirty. So yeah. my, phone. <laughs> my phone. My phone. Are we good? You've been catching all of our meanderings. Okay, <clears throat> calling to order. Uh, roll call. We're all here. Mike's not. Mike's still got the flu. Um, hopefully he'll be back soon. Uh, this is the time when we open the open forum, and I believe we have a group that's going to give us a presentation, the Boreal Core group. You guys can introduce yourselves. There's the two microphones here that will catch your, your, your voices, so we want you to come close enough that we can hear you. And introduce yourself, and then let us know what you what you got. So, ready, go. Uh, yeah, just, just stand up over here. We're, right up here. We're all friends here. I know who you guys are. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrew, and um, we would like to inform you of Tobacco 21. Um, okay, Tobacco 21 is um, the um, so raising the legal age for buying any tobacco products, e-cigs, vaping, cigarettes, to age 21. And the reason we want to uh, raise the age is to keep tobacco products out of high schools. Oh. And um, my grandma, she started when she was young in middle school or high school. And she started it because she thought it was cool and she'd get it from older kids, like high schoolers. And kids these days, they're told that they'll be sophisticated and glamorous and cool if they start smoking. And then when they start smoking, it can lead to different types of addictions that can take them down a different road that they wouldn't want to go down. And so if we can keep it out of high schools, then um, older kids wouldn't buy it for younger kids and there would be less smoking in this world. Okay, so over there is the... Um, so when um, someone takes like a CAT scan of their lungs, they make it and they put it into like small slices that are minuscule, and that's what we displayed. And then they, it shows like the different when they we bedazzled them with um, <laughs> wiki sticks and um, like buttons to show um, the like effects that what your lungs would look like on the inside when you smoked. We bedazzled them because that's what. People they say you will, I <laughs> mean you will look cool, uh, you'll be cool if you smoke, and so we just took that as an artistic kind of view and put it on the board. There you go. Um, I think that's it. Are there any questions? Well, why don't you go through your little handouts? You brought all these beautiful handouts. You tell us what they all say. Okay, um, so the, those are signs that we received when we went to the Minnesota State Capitol to talk to our lawmakers about the effects of smoking and ask them to raise Tobacco 21 in Minnesota. And we marched and received some of those signs. And then this is what we made to talk about um, the effects of like e-cigs and vaping pens that are being targeted at younger kids. Mm -hmm. And um, you see them next to candy in gas stations. And we walked into one at a holiday on our way to the cities and saw va a kid of vape pens next to Little Debbie's. Um, and they do that everywhere. They target it near schools and near chips and candy, so kids think that it's okay because it's near the food that they normally eat. Hmm. And then there's other people in our group that couldn't make it today, but these are so these are just all the drawings that we did mm -hmm. for the board. Yes, and our um, we also put our bedazzled, of course, cards on <laughs> the um, thing in the jigger. So. <laughs> Some of the newspapers that we wrote that talk about tobacco in a different level. Cool. Have you um, have you done any research into? Because you have one that says twenty six percent of my of my classmates smoke, chew, or vape. Have you done any research around here to see what what it is around? around no, here? that is one of the things we're gonna. After this, we're gonna continue um, trying to get tobacco twenty one and raise that, and then get smoking out of here. And we're gonna eventually. Um, do more and maybe probably end up taking like a survey of families and how smoking has affected children's lives. Okay. Cool. We're hoping to do a lot with this. Yeah. And there's, there's, so I'm gathering since you have posters and stuff like that, that, that there's, there's another group of, there's a larger group of people in the state that are, that are pushing for this same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the American Lung Association partnered with us, so we're representing Grand Marais. 
and trying to get um, Tobacco 21 and Grand Marais. Cool. Because they've already done it in um, like Edina and Plymouth, but we're trying to get it statewide and national. Do you, when do you guys meet? Do you have like a, like a set meeting or is it kind of whenever? No, just whenever we can schedule it, whatever it looks like. Kind of you should let me know when you're going to meet and I'll come and we can talk more about this. I like it. I like seeing you guys working on it, but that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, some of the people couldn't be here because of other conflicting extra regulars, so this isn't all of us. Cool. Well, you guys look like a pretty good group. You even like organized yourself by size. <laughs> 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 Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. Thanks a lot. Yes. I think that everybody else is on the agenda. <laughs> awesome. So let those guys move themselves out. All right, so we have uh, next thing on the on the agenda is the consent agenda. We have the typical three things on the consent agenda: uh, approval of the agenda itself, the approval of the previous meeting minutes, and then the approve approvement of the payment of the bills. These we'll probably have to do separately at the end, separately. Yep. Okay. Yep. Bye, guys. Thank Thanks you. For coming Thank in. you. Um, so, if unless somebody wants to pull something for discussion. Then uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I will motion. Okay, there's a move. Second. Movement and a second. Any further discussion? Just as long as we make sure to add that on to the agenda lower down. These guys? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just do these in, in well, I guess we don't have in other, other items. Put it under council or after creative economy? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. As amended. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right, so the next thing on the agenda is the uh, beer and wine license for Dockside Fish Market. So uh, with uh, North House's purchase of that property, um, North House has found a vendor, which is Seafood Markets Incorporated or something of that nature that, that ha does fish, uh, fish-based and seafood-based restaurants and a couple of other places. Um, and because they are a new entity, they need to apply for for a beer and wine license, just like Dockside did, because um, it's a different entity. So unless somebody has any questions about that, I would entertain a motion to approve that as well. So we haven't received their certificate of insurance. Oh. So make your motion pending, pending. insurance. And it hasn't been reviewed by the, doesn't the sheriff have to, have to yeah. review this also? Yeah. And has the sheriff signed off on it? No. Okay. We're the, we must be the first ones. Then. Yeah. Well, I'd make, I would make a motion to approve uh, pending the insurance and you know, meeting all the other requirements uh, of review. Okay, and motion? I'll second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that one carries. So now we're going to move along. Um, so this year for the, uh, for the emer emergency management uh, conference, uh, there's been the proposal and the plan put forward to uh, to do a live burn up at the Tom Tabota property at the 1800 West Broadway, or West Highway 61. Man, that's a different situation. <laughs> there isn't even, even an 1800 West Broadway. Anyway, um, so in because we're going to be doing something with that property, we have to take care of the asbestos. Now, we don't have quotes yet for the demolition and disposal. Um, but we do have a quote for the asbestos abatement, which we would have to do whether we were tearing the place down or burning it. Um, and so that abatement came to just under $9,000. Um, and so right now we need, we need to address that, number one, and then we'll come back with the demolition and disposal. And we also have been here to talk about it. If you guys have any questions about what's going to go on, maybe you can just give us a little update about what you're planning to do with the live burn and just so everybody knows like what the plan is and then and then we can we'll move on to the asbestos abatement thing okay uh, so basically the end of the month is the emergency services mm -hmm. emergency services conference and uh, for that we identified the property as a usable training facility, I guess you could say, for burning. Um, we've got a few folks in the county that need to finish out their fire one and two from over the years that they're supposed to do a live burn. 
this is like one of the only times that we've had a live burn up here for quite a while. Um, so basically what we're going to do is with the building, we're going to light it on fire and then we're going to put it out. And then we're going to light it on fire and then we're going to put it out. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually we're not going to put it out. Eventually, well, <laughs> we're, the plan is right now due to neighboring con neighborhood concerns and uh, exposure neighbors and that kind of stuff, exposure concerns. So the plan is not to burn it all the way to the ground. So there, there'll still be a structure standing. Um, with the house there and all the stuff on that south end, I guess you would say that it's it's just too risky to uh, try to burn the whole thing down. So the way it's constructed, we can, it's so compartmentalized that we can start on one end and burn that until it's no longer, it's too wet to relight or it's the floor's bad or whatever. So, so there's going to be a little bit of smoke and we'll have the trucks and stuff up there and we'll be up there for probably part of the day just going through the rotations until everybody's <clears throat> got their turn or else it's gotten too deteriorated to continue. Cool. And what, uh, what's, the, what's the timing on that, the date? That's the, uh, the 28th. April 28th. Okay. And uh, we need the asbestos abatement so that we can give the MPCA the 10 day notice. For, to, to, for the paperwork side of it, just to have that in place. Um, before the burn. Before the burn, just, just because. Do we go out for bids with abatement or do we just contact someone? Being that it's under 10,000, we do not have to go out for bids. <clears throat> and like Jay said, that would have had to been done whether we were doing right. what we're doing or whether it was just getting torn down, which was the plan mm -hmm. just before we said, hey, can we play with it before you get rid of it? <laughs> For the square footage, the cost, just some, when you're not dealing with it, you look and go, what? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I did that too. I went, really? Um, <laughs> it's not a lot uh, of square footage. I know that, you know, the crawl space here is undetermined, but still it's like, whoa. Right. Yeah. And I think I think I read somewhere that that was a worst case scenario. Right. That's a not to exceed. Yeah. Yeah. So it could be significantly less. less. Mm -hmm. It just depends. Yeah, the crawl space is really the wild card there, I think, because 200 square feet of linoleum, five five square feet of chimney paper, um, and then the crawl space. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that it could be much cheaper. Yeah. So it's uh, a well, not I, to exceed. Before I came down here, I, w I walked into a couple of the units just to re-familiarize myself and the, 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 the there's the linoleum is in in the uh, bathrooms, bathrooms of those places and I mean the bathrooms of those places aren't much bigger than half no. a table here so right. 200 square feet seemed a lot to me too so I don't know if that if they looked at the house part of it too and that part of what's in there is part of this or not I, might be I, important I, to clarify that but, um, but uh, yeah but it's not to exceed so and they're aware of the time sensitive. Yes. Yep. They intend to be up here next week. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. So, does anybody have any more questions for Ben or uh, or a motion? I assume if it doesn't rain, you guys will. You guys, does it have anything to do with wind or anything? No, really. It'd have to be like forecasted for like this weekend, 50 mile an hour winds or something like that. Yeah. It's pretty much rain or shine. Yeah. We, uh, I always tell folks we don't get to pick when the pager goes off when we oh, have sure. to go deal with that stuff. So. All right. No, I could see going. Into <laughs> we don't get any rain until April on the fall, and that's all I'm thinking. Right. About. Yep. Right. So and the actually, the one, there, right? the one of the things that we do have to get one of the permits that gets issued that morning or that day is from the D the, the DNR. Mm. That's good. Enough. So they they have to issue us a burning permit to to do anything for the day. So. Great. So we take that into account, and then uh, that weekend, I mean, we're up, there's stuff going on all around, and if you want to see what we're doing or whatnot, just stop on, swing on up when we're doing that stuff, and our trucks and our equipment is all of your stuff, too, so you can watch your money at work, I guess you could say. Do you have others coming from out of the county for this band? I don't think we have anybody from out of the county coming. We bring in instructors and all of that stuff from out of the county. I don't know that there's any other firefighters coming from outside I just, yet. I remember when, well it's not his anymore, the property that Tom Crosby 
built on. Mm -hmm. That house burnt. You had other fire departments from around the northeast area here. Yep. I remember going to watch it. So. Yep. Yep. We, like you say, we've got enough folks in the county that have expressed interest that we haven't gone, okay, well, we need more people from Good. outside. <laughs> Every firefighter I run into on the street is like, are we burning? Are we burning? <laughs> 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 yeah, you guys are out. strange breed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we are. <laughs> 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 yeah. This is not something, I'm not worried yet about how much our firefighters love fire. <laughs> 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 not worried yet. Cool. It's one so, of those things we don't want them to really have to practice. But no, but it's right. kind of good that they have the opportunity, <laughs> yep. too. So. I'd, uh, I'd make a motion if that's what we need. That's uh, what we need. To approve the uh, quote for from ACCT Incorporated for the asbestos abatement and then the blessing of the fire department for the uh, burn. The motion? Second. S motion and a second. Any further discussion? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited about it. I think it'll be great. I'm actually personally really excited to get to see something happen up with that motel and get it cleaned up a little bit. So. Uh, and you should be hearing a lot more about it. They've got there's a lot of misinformation, I guess, that started. So, in the next week and a half or so, I'll be on the radio station, and there's we should be sending out public service announcements and all of that kind of stuff. I'll clarify so that, on the radio uh, tomorrow morning. So that, yeah, so when we all come back, when they come back to City Hall on Monday, the phone's not ringing off the hook. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> angry constituents uh, yelling at everybody. So. I'll, I'll bring some popcorn and some chairs, <laughs> and then yeah. you can all sit down and watch you burn it. <laughs> I'll be there. That would actually be kind of fun. Yeah. Like okay. bring a barbecue? We might have to. Barbecue. We might have to barbecue. Do you really need it? Yeah, it's best to send a lot of stuff to the Nope, I don't want anything. Yeah. It, well, it, 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 it sounds, but there really the probably won't be yeah, much <laughs> to see on the outside. I mean, there'll probably be minimal smoke and all of that kind of stuff going cool. on. It's just that everyone knows we're on the highway, we're on the corridor, so people driving by and all the trucks and everything it. out there are going to be yeah. raising eyebrows. So after we burn the speck one down out there, that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I think Monday after that one, there were some angry phone calls that were made. So. <laughs> well, we'll try and get ahead of that. I, I learned a lesson that, that time. So. <laughs> That's about. All right. So we have a motion and a second. That was our discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right. Thanks, Ben. All right. Thanks, Thanks Ben. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Thanks. It's going to be great to get those out of there. I mean, they're getting to be really, you know. It's an eyesore. Well, not only an eyesore, but I think a, a safety hazard, too, yeah. with all the units wide open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and then that, when I was walking around there, I mean, there's a, a crawl space. It's deep, so just having that, you yeah. know, those things. Mm. You don't want people falling in. Nope. Yeah. Cool. Right. cool. Thanks, Ben. Thanks. See you. Have a good night. So, all so right. when, when will the, uh, the issue of the demolition be addressed? And, Soon. Mm -hmm. it, it right will, we were seeking bids. Um, we just didn't get them today. Okay. So um, that maybe our next meeting. We'll... Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm expecting they that they'll happen in the first couple of weeks of May. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not going to leave it sitting up there for, for very long. No. Half burned. So it's going to yeah. be going away. I mean, already the first it's, thing. A, it's, a, it's a hazardous you know, oh, safety yeah. situation. Uh, so. Mm-hmm. Yep, so we're ready to get that all settled up, so that's good. Is that ever checked out by law enforcement at all or anything, do we know? For anything? Like anything? For, I mean, not that we know of, I guess I don't know, but are there homeless people that would want to go use that spot? Are there kids in there that are graffitiing or doing? Is it ever just checked on? When we bought the property, um, we had... We had the sheriff come and patrol it with us because there had been signs of of, of some squatting, and um, and so we basically sent the maintenance guys up with a bunch of plywood and and you know barred up the doors on some of those things and the windows so that people couldn't get in, and then since then those those units have either been de demolished or m removed. So we've got open doors now, though. Right? I know right now, yeah, but I don't think anybody's going to live in there or <coughs> going in there. But maybe I could be wrong. I don't know. Well. I, I was told by the sheriffs that they, like, when they're in that area, they just pull through. 
So I think that it's, you know, as much as we can ask. Mm -hmm. Unless there's a report yeah. or something. I just wondered if I take a peek now and then. Mm -hmm. All right, and so. You know, that's swimming pool, uh, you know, rehab. Yeah. <laughs> well, people told me that it's that a childhood pool, memory. That swimming pool is still in the ground. Yeah, that's just yeah. filled in. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, pretty crazy. All right, so we're moving right along. Um, so this, the next item on the agenda is the uh, prioritization of uh, of the, the project amenities for Highway 61, and we all were there at that meeting, and we all did the work on on that prioritization. Um, or just, you know, Anton did the work and we all just agreed. <laughs> just um, so basically what we have is we have a list of, of things rated from highly important to not quite as important. And I was talking with Patrick a little about this a little bit earlier and I was, I felt like, you know, what we got I think is useful information. We got, you know, what people are thinking about from top to bottom as the things that they want to see in that project or that they really, really need to see in that project. Um, but I was thinking that if, you know, it might have been a better way to go through and rate those things on like a scale of one to five, having one be, you know, like the most, the most desirable or the least desirable and then have five be, you know, the opposite, just so that you could get an idea of what are the things that people are ab think are absolutely like 100% necessary you know, like pedestrian lighting, which was our overall our number one thing, would be you know could could have just been rated fives, and then that would make it the the highest, you know the the highest priority or you know like the highest rated, and then you know the the landing or one of those other community areas could be something that would be viewed as not as essential, but that's that's looking at it you know hindsight is twenty twenty as we know. I think we still kind of got the same thing out of it, though. Yeah, don't I, th I think it's applicable information. It's just when I'm when I'm processing that type of information, that kind of information works better for me. But I think we've got what we need. Um, we sent that information along, mm -hmm. um, so so CJ is working with that information now. Um, and I'm not sure if there's anything we really need to 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 do with it right now. Um, I don't believe so. I think CJ is going to work with that and then give us something we can react to okay. with better numbers and. Yeah, I thought it was was interesting. Those that had rated things high that ended up low, or those people that rated stuff low that had ended up high, to hear their perspectives on why they chose to vote mm -hmm. and select the way they did. Um, you know, because we obviously all, weren't all thinking. Kind of along the, the, the same similar um, with the same similar similar concepts, mm -hmm. and you know, which which, which helpful is good. to me helpful to me to understand how somebody else might look at it that could could justify something that, that I might have thought was really low, um, you know, to be a, to be a higher mm -hmm. uh, ranked uh, item, and so well, I thought I, that was worthwhile. I, mean, I do too, and I think it gives us time as we go back now and talk about it again. Um, to go back and think about what people said and maybe say, okay, I want to rearrange my thought process just a little bit because of what somebody said that made total sense to me right. or I hadn't thought about or, um, you know, I think that's the best part about having a diverse group is everybody brings something to the table and different thoughts and experiences that then you can go back and shape what it is you really want with more pieces of information mm -hmm. available. Well, at a, at a higher level of reality, we hit when we have to actually start to think about the the cost of those items mm -hmm. and right. know, know that we don't have the resources to do everything that's on that list. So right. somehow something has to, <coughs> to drop off the bottom, at least for, for at the initial you know uh, right start of the, start of the project. Yeah, and and I, I thought the conversation was helpful about discussing the things that. Um, that are not and not necessarily essential to this project, is, as as this project itself, so that gives us some leeway to have you know continuations, continuing development of the corridor, which I think is a good thing as well. We can make we can make the corridor you know this 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 new thing, and then we can continue to enrich it you know for the next several years. I think that that's a good plan as well. Um, it also frees up the budget for the things that we really do think are important, like like benches and 
and pedestrian scale lighting all the way up the hill, you know, or like some kind of continuity and lighting and signage all the way through the corridor um, and trees and things like that. So, well, and I thought it helped at the top of the page to have kind of the goals of, you know, why were we doing these things and to really go back and look at those. Because if I didn't look at those, mm -hmm. I might have a different idea of things. But right. when you go back and say, okay, what are the guiding principles here? What are we trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. Now I got to think about what I really am choosing and trying to accomplish. Yeah, and I think that that's, you know, for, for us moving forward, I think that's going to be a really big thing for the council to consider is. You know, with pretty much any decision that we make, is this, is this something that's going to, you know, that's that's going to or going to enforce those visions and values, mm -hmm. or also, is there a way that we can make these decisions or do these projects that that fulfill that more, you know, fulfill it more than others, others other ways that we could do it. So, yeah. So this is just more for our information. All of this. Yeah, yeah I think and so. And then that, the, not the back of that, but the next page, this local share budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, besides, you know, if you go through these numbers and you see the remaining TAP and DOT match funds, that 440 that's on there. Yeah. And if you take the corridor amenities and not the amenity sites, right? So now we're basically left with 104,000. Right. Um, that doesn't, there is actually potentially other sources, right? Like you said, off of this second page, there's right. other, so, because all that. Right. Okay. Yeah. All of these numbers are very preliminary. Yeah. Um, one quick question. Uh, I feel like I remember that there was 77 trees. For some reason, that's mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yep. yeah, that's what was originally identified in the plan was was funding for seventy seven trees. And I'll, if you divide seventy nine thousand by four hundred and fifty, that actually is one hundred and seventy nine trees. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, I know these are all preliminary, but yeah. that's like more than double mm -hmm. the amount of trees that we. Yeah, and CJ well, did and say numbers. that these dollar amounts were very preliminary. Yeah. That's obviously yeah, that's I interesting. Just, I wonder where he got that number from. I don't know. Maybe I bet you what he did is he caught is he he probably counted up every single one of those circles that he put on that map, because I mean the trees that are on his illustration are like literally every twenty feet, yeah. all the way through the entire corridor, and that, you know, just about everybody I talked to was like, whoa, too many trees. Well, yeah. But well, and I think they had a good point as we met Monday. Are we planting on a place where they're really going to grow and thrive, or in another five, ten years, are they going to end up dying mm. because of what's the base and underneath them? Right. And, and what's the point of doing it? And you know, MnDOT has been pretty responsive on that, which is great. They, they've mentioned, you know, pretty straightforwardly that they um, that they're they're looking to um, looking to replace the soils where the trees are going to be parked or are going to be planted with um, with you know better growable soil which you know might be <laughs> in might storm be, water runoff <laughs> might be great for a while yeah you know I, I i still feel like you know you you put a a pot of good soil in a stone beach yep you know eventually you're going to get stones in there and yep but i but i do think that that gives the trees a better chance <laughs> a much better <laughs> chance um yeah so the you know, going to that second page or that last page, the local local share budget. So we already know about the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of of TAP grants, um, and we and it were great. It was great to hear from MnDOT about their their streetlight contribution. That's what they. That's the number that we have right now. Um, that might change, but that's the number that we have. Uh, we have to keep in mind that the hundred thousand dollars of a possible park capital contribution would be for projects that would be in or near the park. Um, and then street re reconstruction funds are things that we've saved up, the city has saved up over the years for projects like this. So that goes into infrastructure for the project. Um, yeah. Can this, this doesn't address the stormwater issues that might take place off the right of way that you know, could be in addition to, um, to this? My understanding is that the stormwater plan expense is in addition to this. Mm -hmm. Yes. We did receive um, 
uh, approval for grant from that stormwater group for this Highway 61 project. So that would be some funding for that. Awesome. That's great. But if some, if this was an extended beyond the Highway 61 corridor, that warranted additional stormwater work outside of that area, we would I probably put, would, have to yeah. put, or would that grant pay for that? I'm not positive on all the details. I, I would dare say that that money would be would be fine to be used outside. But without actually talking to soil and water, we don't know. Um, I'm assuming that the stormwater plan is why we got that, that money, not because of the, the Highway 61 project. So then... Part of it is the Highway 61 project. Part of it is. Yeah. Because they're going to be working on it right. already. Mm -hmm. So we can right. tie a few items together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what what uh, the funding expenditure requirements? Who is dictating that? That's just like the, those are like the rules that we're setting. Or I just wonder the, about the the project cannot. I think the tap project. grant. I, I I think that's a state grant. Okay. That those would be state rules. Okay. I think TAP is, I think the TAP was federal. Oh, federal. I yeah, mean, there's so many jurisdictions here. So let's say the TAP was federal, or if it was state, it doesn't matter. So that that money can be used inside or outside of the right of way due but, to the grant rules. DOT told us straight up that they're not spending money outside of the right of way. Right. So, well, so that, we and all that I was money. wondering is just the, the, 2D there, the project cannot propose permanent changes to the city park lands campground regardless of funding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would be regardless of funding if we, but we can we can do that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we can pay for that. That's all. That's part said, of the project. Just, that wording was like, right. well, okay. Makes sense. Cool. Any more questions about this? We'll have lots more to talk about <laughs> for this. All right, so we're just going to move right along then. The next thing you got in your packet is an update that I that I have from the Creative econo Economy Collaborative. Um, so last year, 2017, the council uh, gave uh, gave the CEC a charge to um, to work on putting together some ideas for how the city could implement in like an arts oversight board of some sort. You know, a, a, an organization within the city that would um, that would be able to handle public art and other concerns about um, art-related things that the you know the park board at, the, at its own admission and the rest of the city structure don't um, don't have a lot of, of, of structures in place to handle um, and the for a little bit of background for you new new counselors. Uh, the Creative Economy Collaborative, they've been around for a couple years. They did a, um, a, uh, like a, like a six month long engagement process within the arts community um, with Arts Lab, which is based out of the Twin Cities, to, uh, to put together what our economy up here looks like in regards to art and, and how, what kind of impact that brings and what are the ways that we can, we can bolster that and improve that. Uh, and they came up with some pretty incredible numbers and if, if you'd like that report, I can certainly find that for you. Um, there's a lot of arts activity in our community and, and it's, uh, it's something that they, we came up with some very specific ways that we could help uh, improve that or at least you know process it better. And one of the things that came up in many areas was was for, for a, an arts commission of some sort or an arts advisory board of some sort within the, within the community. So for a couple of months we've been getting together, this organization meets once a month, um, and we talk about, uh, we've talked about this for the last several months. Um, so then they came up with three, with three ideas, or is it two ideas? Two are listed here. Two ideas. <laughs> Maybe they. I, I think they were going to unveil the third one. <laughs> and oh, just wow. right now, um, no. The, I think that we rolled, we rolled the, um, we rolled the, the third one into the second one because that was the idea of an arts advisory board. So, throughout the entire process, the creative economy 
collaborative, use the strategic or the comprehensive plan, vision, and values. Uh, you know, support local it's the local business. Um, number three, because they're working on art space type things. You know, like uh, uh, artists live work housing, so that would be develop access to housing for all people. Um, expand education for the mind, body, and soul, um, and enhance the community's deep connection to the outdoors and engagement with the environment. We're all kind of things that went together with that, um, with this conversation, and. Uh, and they came up with these two ideas. So the first one, Arts Commission for the City. So it would be a full commission parallel to the other departments and commissions that we have. Um, their job would be, um, would be to basically respond to any needs or concerns that the city has that, would be, that could be considered aesthetic or art related. So this would stop sh probably short of, of a design review board, but it would be something of that, of that nature for the city. Um, the pros of this we, would f we found would be um, you know that it has it has the ability to propose policy for the city, and it also has the ability to um, you know to hand down some some direct um, direct rulings on things, which would I think make a lot of the public art situations that we end up in uh, would would make them a lot easier to deal with, because you know right now they kind of bounce around between the council and the departments, and when we try and figure that out. They're, the arts commission their job would be to handle that. And you know, and come to the come to the city council with suggestions, just like the the planning and zoning does when they look at their zoning, or the park board when they look at their rates and and the use of the of the parkland. So they would be kind of interconnected with some of the others because art is really interconnected across the city. But that would, that's that that proposal. Um, and the second one was one that we were sitting there and we had been talking about this for a couple of months. And all of a sudden, somebody just said, "Well, why don't, why don't, why can't we do it? Like, why can't we? We're meeting already. We have all the players at the table right now. Why don't, why don't we do it?" And so that, so then we we worked with that and said, "Well, let's, let's how what would that look like if the CAC was made um, the art into an arts advisory board for the city departments? We'd have to put some kind of structures in there uh, so that there would be." Uh, there would be a precedent for the the departments to use their use their input, or at least for them to have some way of of, of giving input on projects that are being hap that are happening. Um, so there are a couple of things that went on to, on to that, making sure the departments are responsive to their input, um, having a city council on on the a city council member on the CEC would be essential to that, and also a monthly update on what the CEC has been working on. So that would be, you know, similar to a staff, um, you know, a staff or counselor update at the end of the meeting, just to say these are the things we've been working on, um, you know, and then at that point they could make proposals, uh, policy proposals through their city council member that's that sits on the on that advisory board. So we don't need to do anything right now about this, but I would like you to think about these two choices. Um, and or other choices that you can think up and how they would be how they would be implemented as far as the city is concerned um, and then we can we can have a more intense conversation about this um, at the future or in the future when you get a chance to put together some questions and things like that I got a couple questions yeah, go for, <coughs> for clarification mm -hmm. is this CEC a local group yeah okay are you part of this when you're saying we yeah, I've been going okay. to the meetings for the past several years. So when they started the process with Arts Lab to gather the information about the local arts economy, they invited me to be on it. Mike was actually in on that process as well. Okay. Um, uh, many local artists from all over the county were, which I think is part of what gives it gave it a lot of strength. Um, and right now, on the CEC, on this group, um, there currently are people from all across the county. It's not just people in the city limits, which I sure. think is, is a benefit for it as well. So can you define art for me? That's one of the things that the CEC spent quite a few, um, quite a few meetings uh, working on, and they took, you know, there's a bunch of artists, they took a very wide um, definition of what art is, uh, and that's part of why we that's why part of why it was named the Creative Economy Collaborative because we didn't want to call it the arts economy, because 
it seemed like that was too narrow for what we have because we have a, we have an arts and crafts school, we have you know the um, we have some people around here who are basically like vocational skills people who create things through their through their vocational skills. You know, we want to be able to include people who make music. We want to be able to include people who make useful things that are more than just the bland utilitarian. And that's thing. what I wondered because if we get as I looked at these and just trying to think about it, when you say art, I'm thinking, okay, what about music? What mm -hmm. about theater? If we do it for, if they weren't included and we do it for one set group, are we going to have another group behind it and another group behind it and another group behind it right. that all want to be having a say? And pretty soon you're going to have city councilors that are going to be all over in different meetings to be on a board <laughs> and people are going to go, wait They're a They're all there. That's one. Of, that's another strong thing about the CEC is that they're already all there. Okay. We have a representative from the historical society. We have a representative from the playhouse. We have a representative from the the local music, uh, the music association. We've got a representative from the art colony, from North House, uh, from Visitor County, from uh, just you know okay. some of the, we have an architect. So it's there diverse. As well. Yeah, they, they, I mean they really did put a lot of. Um, uh, they reached out really, really far when they started the process, and now we still have a lot of those. Um, we still have a lot of those members uh, that regularly participate in the meetings. So it's, I, you know, either way this would work. I, I think that you know using the CEC to kind of hash out what this looks like, I think, is a really good idea, because they already have a lot of institutional knowledge of what's going on. Um, and you know Jan Sievertson, who was a city councilor, now a county commissioner, um, who you know pushed for this quite a bit, or something like this, quite a bit when she was a city councilor. Um, you know she's she she's a part of that group as well. So there's you know county county representation, city representation, it's all over. So yeah, I think it, I think it's good that we're having a more formal discussion on this because obviously the conversations uh, in my mind have shifted somewhat uh, from the days when Jan was on the council and we were talking about you know trying to create an art commission and we've had uh, artists that have um, offered public art to the city and we've not quite known what to do with those things and you know we said we, we need an art commission to to do to make some decisions about this because maybe the city council isn't the best you know um, organization to, to to make that that decision we need somebody with a little more uh, specialized expertise, and mm -hmm. um, so so I, I mean I think it's, it's good that we're having this conversation. I think one of the things to me is that you know I mean I'd like to have a better understanding of what other communities that uh, have either arts commissions or other organizations that uh, you know help support uh, the arts and work with uh, the, the city councils, how they work and what seems to to, to make sense. Uh, I mean I don't want to go back out and reinvent the wheel for, for this but that's where these ideas came from so so we looked at at, at cities um, big small in between artsy not so artsy we looked at at, at um, you know arts boards for from a number of these cities and there's there's quite a few examples in in the in Minnesota as well Grand Rapids has one um, we also looked at um, oh there's an artsy town in BC I can't remember what it's called. What it's called, and I'm blanking on the name. But they have, uh, they had an arts board, mm -hmm. and they recently renamed it so that it, or it, I think they had an arts commission, and they they renamed it recently so that it was more inclusive to all the other, um, all the other forms of art that uh, that was that was around, um, and theirs is more of an actual commission. So so you know if if we decide we want to move down either one of these these roads, then we have plenty of examples that we can look at so that we can get examples of what their authorities are and how that plays in with the other departments and other um, and the other uh, uh, yeah, commissions and councils and things like that. So, so there's, there's lots of information on this. The, the organization certainly has gathered a lot of that information. And if, if I know what kind of information you all want, so that we can have a more informed conversation about this, I can make sure that we have that for a meeting. Well, you know, one of the things is because you know this conversation I and mean, what you brought up seems to 
to broaden kind of the scope of what this commission or the collaborative might be interested in kind of seeing as their purview and um, maybe that's good maybe it's not I don't know but uh, but I think we need to have a better understanding of what it is that we want mm -hmm. in terms of establishing an organization to, to be an adv advisors to us and make recommendations Do we, I, mean, I don't think we want to be in a position where they're doing a bunch of work and we get hit that and we're saying we're not on the same page here you know, right we want to be on the same page and, well, and and a lot of that I think has to do with how we how we structure this, you so know, this commission or this board or whatnot. I guess I have a couple points or questions. Um, so there wouldn't necessarily be council representation on a commission. I mean, we we could structure that however we want. Usually there is. Okay. Um, and then. I don't know. I feel, yeah. I, I guess I feel like I don't. I guess I'm not sure how I feel about, which is maybe weird, but I don't know how I feel about like a countywide aspect dictating policy for the city. I mean, non-city residents. Well, and, and see, an arts commission or the arts advisory board or creative economy advisory board or whatever, however we want to phrase that. Both of these suggestions have a lot of flexibility in how they could be created. Yeah. I, I think that... I feel like the advisory board aspect, I think I probably care less about the it being outside, mm -hmm. you know, outside the city limit representation on that board um, because it is simply that. It's to not set policy but to advise right. based on things that are happening. It may be, and, but I, I feel like for a commission, much like park board or planning commission, to, to have people that don't live in the city and aren't. Well, and the, the concept that the CEC that has, ta has talked about for an arts commission would be that, um, that it would have like one at-large member or a couple of at-large members of that on, that on that commission. That would be... Um, that would be either you know seen as as arts experts or people that um, that lived in the county, you know, and the wider part of it, just so that we could get a different perspective than just what's um, just you know within the city itself. But the majority would still would still be people from the city. So I mean, the, all, a lot of these these things the CEC has has talked about. Um, you know, all the way down to what are the potential authorities. We did this this great big activity where we put up, you know, posted notes on the walls about all the the the, the things that we wanted the CDC to, to be able to do. And of course, having artists from all over the range of of the of you know creative enterprises putting up the things like their wish list of what they want this this you know body that enables and empowers art to be within the city. There were a lot of things that got put up there, and. You know, I I made sure at that meeting to tell them like, you know, you realize that, you know, whenever a group gets formed, it's probably not going to have all of these things, <laughs> and they you know they acknowledge that. But it, it's for me right now. I think where we need to be is we need to we need to to put some thought into which which direction we want to go, and what are our concerns so we can solve those concerns and having have a um, you know have a, a a conversation or a process that goes through. For trying to, to fulfill the, the the gaps and the reasons why we're talking about this stuff in the first place. So one of those reasons is that you know we don't know what to do with public art. We don't have any any policies or any kind of process for public art being donated um, to the city. We just kind of punt it every time you know it comes. So these this group could put thought into where are we going to put public art? How are we going to get it? How are we going to um, you know how, how are we going to manage that? Also into uh, you know aesthetic developments of, of you know like all the streetlights and all this stuff. We could just you know we could just say this is something we want your help on. Help us out. So there's I think there's a lot of things that that we could. I think that's where that's where I have the issue with uh, who's who's on that and who is dictating that because if you go light shopping. And you don't look at the prices, right? Well, whatever it is, 
the cool one is always the most expensive one. The thing that looks the best is always <laughs> the most expensive. Huh. I mean, Funny how that works. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, I, so again, if, it's, if, it, if it has, I mean, there are things that happen within the park board that we, it's not like the planning commission, where the planning commission approves a variance or some sort of thing, then it becomes, it comes in front of us to mm -hmm. be the final say. And again, not saying that this can't be set up that way, where we would have the final but like Tim said, to have them do all this kind of work, and then we're like, yeah, we're just going to go with this brass one for thirty-nine bucks because it's otherwise it's going to be one hundred forty-nine bucks. I mean, right. what was that? That is probably somewhat defeating for those people that put all their time into that. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I guess I just I. Those are my my questions and like how we how do we figure that out? I think that's. I, I don't. Us. I I think it's yeah. I I feel much more strongly towards and maybe I don't know you guys can tell me if I'm dumb or why I'm dumb but what the uh, not now we can talk about it later separately um, well I've, even as we've talked about you know housing or creating housing I, I don't know do we want to go down that slippery slope of that we're going to pick certain things that we really want to work towards finding housing for and somebody else that we say oh no well, your reasons aren't good enough or is is that where a city entity goes to and and then how do we make those choices and you know I think I've expressed my concern here a couple weeks ago about what we've got going on in housing and um, our zoning and all those things that <clears throat> I hope down the road um, we can kind of take a look at um, you know and where do we put as I think of spaces where do we put art the first place I think of obviously is Harbor Park and around the harbor because that's where the most space lies for us um, and not saying there aren't more spots, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. But then how, what other things do we want to entertain and to grow and do, and how does that all work together? Um, you know, music, theater, different things. I'd be curious what other cities are doing, even around Lake Superior. We're such a unique, wonderful entity. You know, I think of Duluth, I think of Two Harbors, I think of Bayfield. Um, you know, you go into Canada, what are the, like you said, mm -hmm. what are other communities really doing um, are they tying into those things or are they letting people that have ideas come before them share things and then making decisions or having a few people who they respect opinions and going back to kind of like you said an advisory group mm -hmm. to say hey we have this proposition help us out one of the concerns that I, yeah I, I get yeah that we can certainly do that so I can certainly bring that to the to the CEC at the next meeting and say hey let's put together a little presentation or like a little suggestion of, of these are some of the other cities that have things that work really well you know by the admission of their own city and because they've a lot of them have been you know congratulated by other organizations saying like hey you did a really good job with this so we can certainly do that um, one of the things that I really like about about the idea of, of using the CEC in some way um, in this process is that that hey they're already there you know, like if we create a commission, then we need to get people on it, and we seem to be struggling with that a little bit. Um, and you know, if we give them things to do, they they'll engage it in an intelligent way. Um, and I just there's a lot of that that we need we still need to figure out. Like, what does that look like? What is what are the things that we're going to be asking of this group? Um, and how can we do that in such a way that that we feel comfortable with their with what they bring back to us you know, you know I, I would feel more comfortable with a with a narrower scope um, maybe just related to public art or art in public spaces um, but when you started talking about other things and I don't know where the boundaries are to that that to me you know I have a harder time with that and I kind of like to see us start out with something that at least that I can understand and that's public art and yeah well and that then that leads me and you want to say something to me well I was just thinking on similar lines that where there's multiple music associations you know we have the playhouse um, there's a lot of groups that cover a lot of mm -hmm. sections in the arts currently mm -hmm. and we keep going back to the public art and it's, are we thinking of just 
basically empowering a commission to put statues or you know um, <laughs> physical art pieces place them somewhere aesthetically or light posts it just seems it, it does sound like we're it's like a really narrow right. kind of purview that we're another how, thing. Directing them to? Like how many pieces of art have we been offered I mean maybe it's a hundred and I don't know that but if it's like three do we need to like create a commission in order to like help us with that can't we just if these people are interested in that can't just do it one-on-one -on -one. can't we be like I mean it's almost like the revolving loan fund right they don't meet every week they meet when there's a need for it mm -hmm. you know and I um, yeah I guess that that's the the the, the, I mean, the housing I mean the, the mandate to try and figure out what we can do should come from the City Council to the Planning Commission with suggestions from us to them to try and figure out where are areas that we can do things that we can help solve this right and mm -hmm. it shouldn't be from another it shouldn't be from like the park board because they've got people that they need to employees they need to house saying hey planning commission we need this is what we want to do to build you know housing for our employees so that we can have people work in the park I mean it's that's not that's not the structure of how this is set up I don't think well it's not the way we've done things traditionally so I mean I'm not saying that that's not like the ideas that they might have and that stuff is not valid I mean it's all valid but I, I, I don't know I, no I, I hear what you're saying and, and I, I get that um, as far as housing is concerned uh, the conversations that that the CEC have had have have basically uh, revolved around the idea of, of having access to specific funding sources that are available for um, organizations that do arts-based housing you know that kind of a thing but if they yeah, I mean if it's like if there's a funding source that needs to be run through a you know a, some sort of entity I mean we've certainly done that in the mm -hmm. past with you know, IRRRB funding or you know where they need a vehicle all we are the pass through but it needs to have that government you know those types of things I'm sure anybody if there was an actual proposal that was brought together would be more than happy to listen to that right but I that's not the that's not the the housing thing is not the main no I don't I don't, I don't think that, it is that, I don't these, the, that this is that was brought up that was kind of an ancillary thing that has been because the same group, the Creative Economy Group, has also worked with Arts, Arts Space, to try and figure out a solution for some of this, some of this housing, um, the housing crunch that we've got. So is it like what Jonathan so, says? Is I mean, what's what is the what's the <coughs> core? Is it is it trying to figure out how we can have a creative economy in this town? Well, there you have it with the CDC because we already ways. have it. Trying to figure out ways to to improve it and to um, and to enable people to um, people to to live with art being more of their of their full time engagement. Now that's what CEC does. That's not what we're saying. That like we're, we have nothing written down about what the what the uh, commission or anything like that would do. If we decide that this is a commission that just does public art. That just handles public art and handles city planning around public art. So, like Highway 61, where are we going to put public art? When are we going to put it there? How are we going to get it? Where, like, what are the standards by which it needs to be judged? Like that's that in itself seems like a pretty a pretty big job for. But is for it right worth now. is it worth starting a whole like a whole another commission at the same? I don't know. That's what we have to talk about. You know, we that, and that's, what we, that's what we've talked about at any time that there's been a piece of public part that's been offered to the city is that how do we decide to either accept this I mean what's what are, do we have standards so, and we don't I mean it's yeah. just you know happens and we subjectively make a decision whether we want to incorporate that into a public space and sometimes we do and I think sometimes we have not yeah so is that something we could task the CEC with like when say public art comes into our hands and Say, hey, CEC, you know, this is a project we're trying to figure out a good a good location for it. Or I'm sure I'm sure they would be willing to do that. But I mean, without creating some kind of an, an actual like city 
outlook on public art, then it seems like we're not like that's we're doing the same thing that that we did before. You know, it's just kind of being like, oh, we've got some green space here. Let's put something there. Um, so, I mean, so obviously, there's a lot more talking and thinking we have to do about this. I can get some more information about about structures for other um, for other communities that they have used, and we can we can readdress that um, at a future future meeting. Um, and in the meantime, I can. I can go back to the CEC group and tell them, you know, let's compile the stuff that we've thought about for the past, you know, year that we've been kind of on and off again working on this, and then and then we can come up with well, these are some examples of the authorities that people have put together. These are some examples from different cities, and then we can we can actually be like, well, I feel comfortable with that authority. I don't feel comfortable with that one. This one, how would that even work? I don't know. And that's basically the conversation that we've had at the CEC as well. So that, that would be helpful, I think. To, yeah. to me, that would be helpful. Yeah. So, so I can do that. Um, but this is view this mainly as just kind of an introduction to the fact that we empowered that group to come up with ideas, and they came up with ideas, and they brought them back to us. So now we need to sit and talk about them, and try and figure out what's going to work. So good. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, well, we can keep talking about it. I was say, I think you have to come back with more, you know, and, and well, I know you say point? we as the council empowered them. Uh, I don't, you said it's been several years, so as things change and councils change again, that's the hard mm -hmm. part. Anytime councils, commissions, whatever, uh, as people's change or opinions change or s structures and things change, right. um, then I think we have to go back and revisit where what people are thinking and, and, and the more information would be very helpful to 2017 me. when when that group when we were talking about like do we even want to do this then the CEC stepped up and said well we can figure this out for you and so the council said great wasn't that when we were talking about like the flags the banners and all that stuff wasn't that part of it that was part of it yeah there was also some art offerings too I think yeah, there was mm -hmm. a canoe and whatever those yeah. things were mm -hmm. But what's what, what's the status with that stuff? Uh, the canoe is has been, you know, tentatively um, a site for it has been tentatively found in the in Boulder Park, like behind the row of boulders where there's some of the big trees. I, mean, I guess that's. Kinda I think that would be. Yeah, I mean, there. it would be interesting to see. It's like well. It, but that was. I mean, that was just we did that, like between talking to the park board and. And talking to the artist and trying to figure out what you know where we would put it. Like there's no rhyme or reason to it being put there. And a lot of people are just like, well, geez, if you're going to get this great thing, don't hide it behind the trees and the boulders. Put it someplace where people can see it. But so I mean, like that's one of the things which, that which I think we'd all be responsive to listening to that impact, right? I mean, again, you're going to have 100 people in 95 different locations, right? I mean, maybe not, but you know what I mean. Like there's as many people as there are. There's different. And I appreciate the input that they could give. I guess I, and unless I'm completely lost in what the, what is, I just I don't I don't understand. I completely understand the, the importance of the creative economy, to our economy, in the city, mm -hmm. and absolutely 100 percent. But, um, I just I don't I can't I can't make the connection between. Short of, if those. If, if there is this organization that's there and they're willing to help when there's a piece of public art or there is something that we have a question on um, that if we want some feedback or like hey this might be a good thing to kick over to them to ask them to look at it and to get their suggestions whether it's one four or ten right. you know of options but I, I and yeah, I'm, I guess I'd be interested in looking at more because I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand the. I don't understand the need. For. Creating. A, I think that's a, a, another, governing a whole other governing board, like I a, think a city a, entity. I think that's that's where this conversation has always stalled out of the past. Is that when you start getting to a point of actually creating something, then people are like, what? Well, so, but that's already created. 
I mean, if there's already a group of people out there that are willing to participate, I don't understand what what is is the fear that if they do this, that we'll just reject it anyways. That if they offer suggestions and they put their time in, so that there needs to be this next level up where they do have some sort of authority. I mean, what's I don't understand what the why can't the way it sits right now? Why can't it function? And why can't they, if they are, if which it sounds like they are, this group is willing to participate. Why can't they just participate? As is, why well, does part of it is be because they don't have any. Authority. Well, I think in a way, the, sec the second option is is designating the CEC as as kind of our go to people yeah. on that. But right. it's not calling for the creation of commission. It's calling for using using their yeah. them as a resource. But but again, I'd like to hear have a better idea of what the the scope of the expectation would be. And part of that will probably be to look at the arts lab. Uh, the impacts that they were looking at in the arts lab, because a lot of the, a lot of the things that they were looking at is, you know, well, how do we do public performance in our in the city? How do we, how do we make that more possible for people? How do we, um, how do we make public presentation of, of of art and creativity? How do we how do we work that into the policies of the city? That sort of a thing would be the job of an arts commission, something like that, to actually create structures within the city structure itself that would, would allow and, and enable those things. So I can bring back more more proposals. I can bring the Arts Lab report um, so that we can all look at it. We can hash all that stuff through, and and um, and then maybe it'll be a little bit clearer. And then maybe this was just a little bit premature. I thought that I would come in and just be like, all right, you told us to get some ideas. Here's a couple ideas. Let's talk about it later. And everybody would be like, OK. I'm so. just I'm just a little bit leery of if we create another governing entity, somebody else is going to say, well, we want one, and we want to be a player at the table, right. and now we want one, and we want to be a player at the table. And, and there has to be a demonstrated need of you know for for something that we create, and that was that's actually something that came up quite a bit on the um, you know at the CEC itself was was that you know there was a bit of fatigue around governance. <laughs> Well, and I think, so, it, you know, as you said, it gets harder and harder to find people to join commissions, to join boards, to join council, and even, you know, as council, it's great that we can meet at night, but then the other things that you have to do and extend to so that we're, I think a lot of things are losing some of the working class or younger people in our community to try to have a vision to go forward as mm -hmm. well, and um, so it just becomes difficult to try to fit all these things in and if I need to be on council and now I have this governing board to be a part of and this governing board and this governing board because everybody wants to say at the table again I think we're back to the same problem that people might have a hard time right. jumping in and joining things especially for young people I look at people that have families and kids and two jobs and people pick what's most important to them and right. and that gets really tough Right. Um, and then we lose what we're trying to improve upon. I don't think really anybody's super interested in creating another, you know, another really big, you know, set of structures or, you know, or, or enabling there to be a... a I, I think there's people out there that think, wow, how come this gets precedent over this? This is important to me, but somebody doesn't want to hear me or because they're not interested. Um, so that's where I try and say, you know, having that wide scope of thought to, like Anton says, they're going to come and advise us and help us because it's not an area that maybe two, three, four of us are not art-minded. Somebody else is going to give me their expert opinion that I'm going to listen to and go, wow, that's a great thought. I would have never, and go, sure, um, I appreciate your time and your help on it, but I don't know if I want to attend one more meeting to be a part of something that I have, you know, little knowledge of or maybe little interest because it's not my thing. Yeah, um, and I don't think that either of these these examples are pushing towards, you know, that sort of a scenario. It would be more of having that information come to us during our regularly scheduled meetings so that we would be able to be informed by um, by different perspectives on on something that we aren't we probably aren't gifted in. You know, that's not one of the things that we bring to the table. Okay, so I feel like I've got my marching orders, <laughs> more or less. Um, 
So I'll work on that, and then we'll bring something back as well. I do feel like you know we can we can move we can make some kind of progress on this. Um, you know, even if it's just marginal steps, we can we can do something so that we can have a better structure in place to deal with things we struggle with, both for the creative economy and for for a lot of other other areas of city city life. So, okay, so we're gonna move on. We have three things in your packet that we'll hand out later. One of these, these are all proposals for buying stuff um, from the city. And we're just rolling in the dough. Um, we've got David and Carmen uh, Smith, who gave us a bid for the purchase of the metal silo and assorted scrap metal items <laughs> located at the side of the garage at the Tomta Boda. And now, that stuff would be this stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the old washing machines, we're talking about the old metal silo, and then a bunch of the scrap metal stuff that's around the, oh, the site there. I kind of well. enjoy driving by and looking at them. You know, I, I those yeah, things. You couldn't see that so well before. The speed <laughs> queens, yeah. They're <laughs> yep. nice little washing machines. I would make a motion to approve the uh, bid by DJ Smith for uh, the scrap metal. There's a motion. Second. We have a second. motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? They're removing it all? Yeah. And we usually give them, what, like a month to remove it? But they'll probably have to have it out of there before then because we're doing Before the burn? They, they want to have it out before the ground thaws. Oh, sweet. Good call. Awesome. Right. Next week. There you go. <laughs> Tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> Next week. Um, we should be Okay, motion in a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, curious. The next two are from Ray Peterson, um, who wants to purchase a bunch of the old wire, uh, which is pictured in this, from behind the uh, the city garage down at, at uh, the rec park. So I asked Kim beforehand. She said that that these spools that he wants to buy for five hundred bucks um, are were things from a previous project in two thousand four ish. That um, that that are extra from the project and that we haven't used and that have degraded to a point where we probably wouldn't be able to use them. Um, but we have a lot of it. And um, and so he's putting in a bid for $500 for that, and then also for this big pile of wires and conduit that is inside the, inside the fence for $150. So any thoughts? Any? By motion, we accept the uh, bids. OK, there's a motion to accept the bids from Ray Peterson, two bids totaling $650. Is there a second for that? I'll second. A okay, motion and a second. Discussion? Nothing? Is that all aluminum? Which, in this picture? The spools. The spools are all 4 aught. The aluminum spools that you might see are not yeah. part of it. It's all just the forat that is these big spools. Some of the spools you can see are mostly empty. Some are a little bit fuller. Yeah. So, motion and a second. It was from the distribution build out in 2004 and 2005. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right, so we can tell those guys to get that stuff out of here. Um, all right, so we're moving on to council reports. So, John, do you have anything to... to uh, the parks board meeting was canceled. Uh, Dave Tierstig was out of town. Oh, okay. And we didn't have any pressing issues. So um, that's all I have for that. That's it. Um, we had an EDA meeting on Monday, and uh, we, the, I guess I don't know what happened at the county board meeting, um, but uh, that the Lutzen project is, sounds like it's supposed to be starting with the uh, rental units in Lutzen, just adjacent to the Arrowhead property. Um, and so we passed a resolution to get, get that moving. Um, 
and uh, we have a purchase or an offer on one of the business park lots. Oh, cool. Uh, which was great. Yeah. And we accepted the offer, uh, but it's based on or contingent on financing. They had some financing stuff to work out, so they were hoping to work that out prior to the April 25th public hearing in regard to that. Cool. So, um, so that's great. Another one of those, hopefully, uh, sold. And do you know how many are still available up there, Anton? Most. <laughs> well, how many were originally put in? For roughly 30, thirty something. Thirty. And what do we have? Souls. Eight. Eight. And this will be nine. Maybe more. Three. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking it through. Well, I, I think yeah. Eight, eight, eight or okay. nine. Then, yeah. Thank, Thank you. To make it to the double digits. <laughs> They, yeah, they, it's the top, if you were to go straight up past the church and the vet clinic, and then where the corner is on top, there's a, the biggest, it's like a four and a half acre wow. parcel, but it's the state snowmobile trail. Runs right behind it. Through it. Goes right through it. Oh, it goes right through it. Oh, okay. it goes right through it. Um, snowmobile shop? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Smart. <laughs> so, but they didn't seem to care Snacks about that at all. And, um, yeah, so. That's good. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. cool. Great. Um, I don't think that we had, I'm sure we did have something else, but I talked about it on the radio this morning, but I don't remember what else we talked about. Any, anything so, more happening with uh, the Grand Marais project, housing project? Oh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. what it was. Um, <laughs> we actually job, job. did, uh, <laughs> it's a good thing you're here. <laughs> we, uh, Pass a resolution looking for, or the, the there's the the first phase, which has foundations in, but no buildings sitting on them. Like apparently the buildings are still sitting over in western Minnesota, wherever they were made, waiting to be brought over, um, and they're the first four are ready and sitting there. So those, as soon as they show up, it'll be relatively short amount of time before they're ready to be moved into. But the second phase of that project is a, what would that be, like 12th, maybe? 12th Avenue West? There's a, coming off of 2nd there, there's a road that comes up to the north towards 3rd and dog then, then Dog Lakes to the right. And so there's a request uh, for funding uh, through IRRRB for the infrastructure work on that. Um, and they ended up, I think they ended up being able to add, the overall tallies kind of bounced back and forth. The first round was less homes than they'd hoped for because of, I think because of wetland issues maybe, mm -hmm. but now they're, they're able to, with this second phase, uh, make up for that there's an extra spot up there or something so the overall count will be so when we say 12th is that past homestead then yeah turning mm -hmm. up? so the property it's starts right at the yeah right at the where the lawn stops at homestead is where okay. the property starts and then runs down um and so this is more expensive phase because the first phase they were able to tie everything in off a second so there was no it's just driveway stubs and infrastructure tie-in um, but now it's more expensive because they got to run, you know, city sewer and water and power and uh, up to develop those other lots. Hopefully, I triple RB will be responsive to that. They have been in the past. So. Yeah, their infrastructure funding seems to be a pretty. I mean, I've we've never said they've never said no in that. That's kind of what they're all about. Right. Versus, you know, I mean, if it was a business startup or something where there could be more checking the viability. I mean, obviously there's a need and it's something that, you know, so. D does one roof have a list of prospective uh, there buyers? There is or? a list of people for town. I don't know if that list, like how, I have no idea like how the ordering goes or like, you know, I don't. If people wanted to get on that list, then they should contact one roof to find out more information about the yeah, project you could and get a specifics hold of, about the you, homes. You could call Mary at the EDA to start, or you can call One Roof to get on that. Um, either one, but Mary could 
get you in touch with the right person that you want to talk to um, to deal with the, some of the paperwork and stuff. <laughs> not, not you. I'm sure once something is set on it, people will be more interested in going and taking a look to see what it really is yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, but I mean, it's, it's exciting that that part, and it's exciting that the loot's inside of it is. It sounds like that's. I mean, they're Scott was making it sound that that they're supposed to have people in there in September hmm. or cool. October if things go slow. Which would be amazing because yeah. just based on how the times have gone on this first double grime array side of it, you know, it's been it's a lot smaller buildings, a lot smaller site, and it's been slow. But some of it is it's out of their hands, you know. But uh, and they've obviously got really super tight budgets. So if it gets to a right. certain point, it. You can't just throw more people and equipment at it to try and get it done faster because on the budget's mm -hmm. gone and then it's not affordable. Mm -hmm. So yep. yeah, so yeah, it's 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 kind of exciting. I mean, that's been three three plus years, more than that. I mean, but mm -hmm. as long as I've been on the EDA and even before then, I mean, they've been working on it. So, so it'll be cool to see it all come together. And Superior National, they talked about that. Uh, we approved the, uh, accepted the budget, I guess, for 2018 uh, season out there. It will have all 27 holes open. There is a grand opening, um, which there are business sponsorships uh, where you can donate and get your stuff up on and free rounds of golf. And there's food and there's, um, but it, it's, yeah, hopefully the weather cooperates. But it, uh, it'll be. It'll be pretty. It'll be pretty awesome, I think, uh, to have that back in full capacity. And from everything everybody said, it's just it's pretty amazing. So. It's a gorgeous course. Yeah. It's just weather has to cooperate yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it sounds like that even with the growing on stuff, it's 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 gone well. And so um, they're optimistic, and you know, I really, they and I think that. The I think they budgeted ten thousand four hundred rounds last year, and this year they just bumped it up to twelve thousand, um, which is a pretty, you know, I think the it was hard for people to. I mean, Mountain was always open, but Mountain's a, kind of a boring one of the three, mm -hmm. and uh, so you had that uh, kind of always as a maybe a yeah you know, maybe let's not do that when we're up here, and uh, now having all three, and so that you can. You know, if you come up for multiple days and you can play, you know, yep. all 27 holes, um, it was, it's not that much of an increase in the budgeted rounds for the year to go from 10-4 up to just over 12,000. It might be 12-5, so maybe it's 2,000 more rounds. I guess that's, it is an increase. But um, what that does to the financials for the golf course is pretty astounding, you know. Um, so... You know, let's hope the weather works and hmm. people get out and yeah. So yeah, that's. Is there anything else I forgot about the EDA? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even there. Well. They're having a pre-construction meeting for the Grammarie project tomorrow at ten. Oh really? Uh, over in the office outpost. Uh -huh. They have invited all of our street and utility employees to attend that. Oh, awesome. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I have nothing to report. <laughs> I don't either. We haven't had uh, the why will meet on Monday finance piece, so I don't haven't had anything. Okay. Apart from the MinDOT meetings and the CEC meeting that I've already uh, told you about, I've just you know I've been around town managing this and that. But um, you know when people have things to talk about, they talk to me about it. But on that, I don't have anything else to report. No way. For real. Wow. Kim? I'm done. Patrick? Yeah, we can ask you now. Yeah. How's, your, how's, how's your, first your first four days gone? It's been great. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Patrick helped us run the, well, you were here. Everybody was here. Patrick mm -hmm. helped us run the amenity meeting that we did. <laughs> Say that to the camera. He's up in the dress code, too. I, I know, right? Uh, Mike's, Mike's going to have to shoot. Wear a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 
Well, he's setting the tone, so we're all going to have to kind of change up what we're doing here, probably. Anyway. Suits and ties. Hat's gone. Oh, man. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> we are adjourned. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Do you think he fell?